Okay, so we did see some selling yesterday, um, both large and small caps. See the spies right in the open, tick down, and then at the end of the day, they flush through the prior day's low um, before bouncing right into the close. Gapping up this morning near the uh, near the all time high. So it's two fifty four sixty two four fifty four seventy ish. And support is two fifty three eighties. Um, on IWM, we did actually kick out that support in the last few days. I guess we did get back above there right at the end. Okay, so <laughs> so we flushed it below the uh, 149.40 um, area support. By the after hours, though, we were a quarter above it. Let's see, we're at 150 this morning. So it's pretty clear here. This one fifty fifty, you know, close up here, fail the next day, fail the next day, inside consolidation, fail the next day, pretty violently. It's a pretty nice wick here. Um, so and again, this is in the context of just lower volatility. So, but this is not. The buyers keep on stepping in in the area where, if you're long the market, you want them to step in. Um, but one of these times. You're going to get a consolidation below this area right here, and it breaks to the downside, and then you're going to get your panic it's because of how extended the market is, the small caps especially. Yeah. All right, a bunch of things to look at this morning. Let's start with NVIDIA in a video, which is you know, top two or three momentum stocks in the market up there with Netflix and uh, Tesla. Um, so they announced an AI computer, um, and they're just in the middle of the thick of all these the, okay. these massive new tech trends. Uh, this AI stuff, which they make all the, the chips for the GPUs. Um, then we know self-driving technology. Just keep on seeing this is accelerating. Um, people thought it was 10, 15 years out. Now it looks like it's two, three years out. And so they announced a computer that companies are actually going to be rolling out autonomous vehicles um, in the next year. To this computer technology. And they say 25 companies are working on vehicles. So anyway, so it's got all the right buzz. It's get gapping above the all-time high here. Um, let's zoom in. So it got above the all-time high, went to 94. Looks like there's some supply here at 194. Um, it's already done over 600,000 shares in the pre-market. Um, it's going to be very in play today. Uh, normally has a, an ETR of four. Uh, easily could see it having six to eight dollar range today. So um, that's why we're highlighting it first. Um, not a stock that we highlight uh, a lot um, compared to probably people who just trade it on a daily basis. But today there's enough going on with the new all-time high, this news. Um, you could look for now with this failure, double top here in the pre market. You could look for a flush at least to the 190. Um, a failure to get back above 192 then would bring you into 88. And then we would see if we could uh, then bounce from there. But be prepared to trade it on both sides, but understand on the, uh, on the short side, there's going to be some danger there. So you have a well defined area where it's failing. Uh, Annie B. So, uh, good phase two results. Here's the, let's look at the daily on this one. So, it IPO'd at 16, um, very quickly went to the high 20s. And just over the last couple of months, I mean, the stock was up a lot coming into this news. So, just over the summer, it was a $20 stock consolidating down to 20. It broke out, or I should say, um, broke out of this consolidation, went to the highs. Looks like positive news here, 32 to 36. And now it's gapping up 50% to above 50. Um, as good as this news may be, and maybe the stock is going to, who knows, higher prices longer term, it's a big move for it to have to absorb in such a short period of time. So 
it is a very prime candidate for cell and use. For those who aren't familiar with what that means, um, just Google at SMB blog uh, sell the news and you can probably find a bunch of blog posts or just search the blog. I did a few of videos of that over the last few years. So normally only does 300,000 shares. Even on the days where it does a lot of volume, a million. Since the day it IPO'd, the day it IPO'd, it did over 3 million. Since then, it's only done over a million a couple times. I would think this will be the highest volume day um, since the IPO today. Um, but because of how thin it is normally, it could be, spread could be pretty wide. Um, easily could be 30 cents. So we want to be careful there for more experienced traders. Um, but if we do get a situation, where it fails clearly at a level, or there's a seller where you see there, you want to risk a, a 50 cents to a dollar to try to make five, six dollars. That's uh, that's the trade. So after topping out here about 55, we'll drop five dollars pretty quickly. A couple of days. So it's making lower highs here. Seller's trying to take control. So I'd say the first level to look at here on the open is probably this 52 area. It pops up here. And there's some selling. And you can see if it gets below 50, then it would be on in terms of the downside. And again, there's no support really anywhere. So I put on there 38 is the support. Um, UAL. So UAL updated guidance. Um, let's look at the daily. I saw some negatives in there. I shorted a few shares just to keep an eye on it. So this ran from 50 to 80, and then they just crushed it. It gapped down on this earnings day here. <laughs> it definitely went down a lot further than I expected the next week. Um, and kept on going. Now it's gapping right up back up to this area right here. It's going to be a tough nut to crack. I think this area right here, 7830, 70, excuse me, 6730 to 6780. And 69 is the next resistance above that. I look for failure right in here on the open. Um, so those are on the list. Soft gap fill is 66. Walmart. So Walmart, I could play this one in either direction. It's had some positive press re uh, recently in terms of things that they're doing that have, they have an advantage over Amazon. Um, and the price action has been pretty good. Let's look at the daily just to put everything in context. So it had this down move a couple of years ago when they updated guidance for the next few years. They brought everyone's expectations down. We've talked about this before in the morning meeting. By doing that, it cleared the way for it to work its way back up into the 70s and now up to 80. Um, they recently has been showing some strength here. It's been failing above 80, but it hasn't been really falling apart. Really part of that is the market helping. So the updated guidance all right we got 82 and a half the pullback low here is 81.50 um, I'm prepared to trade it in either direction um, down to the 81 area up to uh, this 82.50 if it breaks through here I play it long up to up to 80 83 and then look for it to fail. All right, Baba. So Baba, it broke out above 180 yesterday. It was pretty clean. Um, whenever we talk about this, um, I like to remind people that even after it breaks out, the pullbacks are just much, very nasty. You can even see yesterday, it topped out at 183. It came off $2 when the market had that little sell-off in the late part, latter part of the day. So um, wouldn't surprise me at all. It came back down and 
retested this 180 breakout area. Um, but pre mentally prepared to continue to trade them alongside up to $190, $200. MDT. So MDT, I shorted this right on the open into 78. It stayed up there longer than I like. It actually broke out through. You can see the wicks, the 70 and a quarter. So 78 was my resistance. So I did the right thing when it came in here. I covered most of it. Um, and then didn't like reshort or add to the little shares I had left as it started to really sell off. I forget where I covered those shares, probably below 77. Um, didn't catch the reversal back up to 78 and didn't short the 78. Um, and I saw it up there. I think I got an alert at around 12 o'clock and my thought process was, wow, the fact that it, it came all the way back up here after this down move, it's pretty strong. Uh, but it did come all the way back down to 77. So just a lot of up and down action. Um, if it can move outside of this range, hold above 78 and look for the gap fill. Um, 7960. If it holds below 76 and a half, you can look for downside to some support at 76. Next major support is until like 74. Um, HMNY, I haven't really talked about this much in the morning meeting, if at all. This has been something I've been following. Some people have been long since five on the desk. I just thought yesterday it really went vertical. And this move here and then came off down to 20. But now there's some more means, mainstream press attention um, on it. And, and because of that, it's, it's likely to, to put in a top um, today, um, if not today, tomorrow. So here was yesterday's high. What we want to see is, does it you know, fail up here somewhere in this, this morning? and then get below the priority is high, and you're kind of creating this range, range here. But it's still, it's still pretty dangerous, dangerous on the short side, um, but it's gone vertical enough, and it's getting enough mainstream media attention that um, it could be very close to its top. Uh, and then PTCT made a simple trade in this yesterday, just shorting it off the 19. Um, it took a while to work. And I never, I think my stop was above 19 and a quarter. Never got stopped out. Eventually came off down to almost 18. Here's the big picture on it. I think if it popped back up today to like 1870, I would reach short some more. I covered some down at 1815, 1820. Um, and then I'm really, I'm really looking to see if it can get below $18. If it gets below $18, I would press into a short on this one. Hope you enjoyed that video. You can actually watch that video if you're subscribed to our Trader 90 before the market even opens. What stocks are in play? What levels in those stocks are important? And how we might go about attacking that stock? That's Steve Spencer, 20 year veteran trader, laying it out there every morning before the market even opens. A really, really powerful tool to start your session off on the right foot. So right now we're offering a trial that you can take advantage of to access this meeting and other meetings throughout the day. We have a meeting at 11 a.m. Eastern where you can sit down with Mike Bellafiore and listen to him talk about what's going on during the morning session, what stocks were in play, what the best trade opportunities were, as well as maybe some things that we're looking at heading into the afternoon session. So I really encourage you to take advantage of that trial.